Hello, Purple fans. It's been a freaking age since I've done one of these. I may actually put this video up early, haven't decided yet. We'll see how it goes and see how I feel when I'm finished. I'm here for a race rundown for the undead. I know that some of you have been waiting for this one for quite a while, so... Uh... Well, here it is now. It's, uh, it's taken a little while, but never mind. How many have we got left? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 8, 12 left. Okay, that's not so bad. We'll get through them. So, race rundown, undead. Uh, one of the teams that I started with in this game, Blood Bowl 2, though I must admit I've never played an undead team seriously. Never, ever, ever. So, um, that's fun. What does Cyanide say about undead then? Their strengths, they're a great bashing team, and ghouls can run fast. Regeneration makes your team pretty resilient. True, true, true. Weaknesses, there's no passing game. <laughs> ghouls have no regeneration and must be protected, and few strength skill evolution for a bashing team. Yeah, that's true, actually. They're pretty much the only... The only uh, no, the whites have access to strength as well. I don't know why they say that, so, okay. And we'll, we'll see in a minute. In the old world, the dead do not rest easy. Vampires lurk in haunted castles, and necromancers seek to escape death by searching for forbidden knowledge. The leash lords rule over legions of corpses, and on the Blood Bowl field, players who died long ago return to the scenes of their former glory and play Blood Bowl once again. Awesome source. Right then, let's, uh, let's make a team. Let's make a team, the Scooby Gang. Yeah. And we'll take the spider. Let's just go through all of the options for skins, because you guys seem to be interested in that. And that's all of them, I think. Oh no, we're still going, we're still going. There we go, back to the beginning. We'll take the basic champions of death and custom team. And we're going to play in... Ooh, I'm not sure how to spell that, so there we go. No. All right, you've got five basic pieces in under team. You've got the mummy, which basically stand their ground, and they're the big guys. Use them together if you can to dominate the field and make sure that everything is working in your favor. You can use them as kind of like a moving pillar of death with support from one more piece, and uh, there's not really much your opponent can do about it. Under teams that I see, they basically succeed and fail on the ability to keep the mummies tight together. The whites, on the other hand, run round and they punch all the holes that you need to punch. They're basically a blitz as if you need to blitz with something. And other pieces that can kind of pick on the ball carrier, can pick on anybody who needs a bit of picking on. The ghouls are your speedsters, they're going to do most of the work with the ball, you can have up to four of them. I personally hate ghouls with a passion, but uh, a lot of people really like ghouls, so... In an undead team, to be honest, if you're going to play competitively, you need at least three of them. Realistically because they give you the speed when everything else gives you the punch. Zombies are your standard meat bag. They can stand in the way and they can take a damn good hit in. So it's worth keeping them on the line. And once they get a couple of skills, yeah, like block and whatever else you decide to give them, basically, the block is all they need, then they can actually be really, really frustrating to deal with. If you manage to get a strength skill on them, like guard or mighty blow or piling on as well, then that's always a lot of fun. And then you got the skeletons. That's all I can say about them being serious, but um, I'm a big fan of skeletons. Uh, I really, really like them. They're, they're, not, they're nothing compared to zombies, though. Zombies are the much better meat on the line. The skeletons are basically a fouling piece and a joke piece, so make of that what you will. I personally like skeletons, though. I use them in many different ways when I'm playing in an undead team, because my undead team mostly consists of skeletons. They are the bread and butter of the team, though they're missing both the bread and butter on their bones. All right then, let's go for a standard build. Of course both mummies, of course both whites. You can start with two ghouls, I think, comfortably, and take the rest zombies. That should leave you... Ooh, it doesn't show me the gold yet. Okay, that should leave you with enough for, I think, three rerolls. Let's have a look, though. It does, yes. So that's your build. That's your standard undead build, I think. Two mummies, two whites... Uh, okay, I wanted three ghouls, but I got two ghouls somehow. And all the zombies. So you can drop a reroll and take a ghoul instead. Or you can take the two ghoul, ghoul build that I've built here. Your first purchase, because you don't need to buy an apo, is either going to be well. Yeah, I think this build and then first purchase 
next ghoul, basically. You can replace a, ske a zombie for a skeleton if you want to as well, but um, skeletons aren't really worth it, to be honest. But we are going to add a skeleton or two just to see how we can build them. So, three zombies, two rerolls, or two. Uh, sorry, three ghouls, two rerolls, or two ghouls, three rerolls. They're your basic builds, I think. Right then, let's have a look at individual pieces then, starting with. Da, 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 the big Temple of Doom mummy. Yay. So, movement three. Can't move very far. Best keeping that in mind, but they can move further than a tree, so that's awesome. Strength five. They're kind of a pseudo big guy, though they have no nega trait, so they're a pretty good one. Agility one, so they're probably not doing anything with the ball. And armor value nine. They have access to strength only, so you need a double to get even the basic skills in general agility and passing. Like I say, they are a pseudo big guy basically. So in terms of leveling up, they start with Mighty Blow, which uh, is going to cause all kinds of problems, and they start with Regeneration, which means that if they do get injured, or deaded again, re-deaded, then you can roll to see if they come back, and on a 4 to 6, the injury is removed. In terms of leveling up though, if we're going to level up a mummy, if we assume standard rolls on this one, I think Guard kind of goes without saying, though people would probably take different things first, but in my view, guard goes without saying, so I'm taking guard first. We can definitely take stand firm, so we're not getting pushed off our opponent, and we can take grab, so we're dealing with putting pieces exactly where we want them to go. You can make an argument for break tackle, uh, especially considering that they can, they can dodge on a five uh, using strength 5 instead of the agility 1 that way, though I tend to find that my mummies basically need to stand in the way as opposed to go around blitzing, so it's not really such a big deal for me personally, but break tackle is an option for other people. Fixed skull is pointless, juggernaut I think is pointless as well, and piling on if you want to have a little laugh, but otherwise I don't see the point, and multi-block just makes them too unreliable when it comes to the second and third block. So if you do get to level 5, level 6, level 7, of course you do have to take these skills, so Break Tackle is probably the first choice out of these. Juggernaut, piling on as a last result. Resort. Can't speak. Okay, so that's uh, that's normal mummy. And if we go for non-normal mummy, uh, this guy. So any double, you're probably rolling block. If you're lucky enough to get a second double, you're probably rolling dodge. There you go. You've now got a monster. You've now got a monster that everybody wants dead. Congratulations. You win Blood Bowl. And there's no point in taking any passing skills on a mummy because they can't do anything with passing. There's not really anything else that I'd recommend from here. You can make an argument for tackle, but it kind of feels like a waste. And there's definitely nothing else I'd take from agility because even though a leaping mummy sounds fantastic, just uh, with agility one, none of these things are really helping you. And characteristics, may as well take strength if you can get it. I wouldn't bother with agility personally. Movement allowance, eh, it's a judgement call. If it's a double, I think I'd take block or dodge instead. If it was a normal, if it was a normal, I'd maybe take the movement. If it was a six and a four, for example, I'd maybe consider the movement. The strength, absolutely. Strength six, fantastic mummy. So there we go, monster mummy. Strength, dodge, block. All right. Having a look at the white then. So the white has movement 6, strength 3, agility 3. Uh, he's basically average, all round average. Movement 6, 3, 3, 8. That's, that's all the average scores. He starts off with block and he also starts off with regeneration. So if he does get injured or killed, he can come back. He has general and strength skill and he gets agility and passing on a double. A standard build for. Uh, for a white. Mighty Blow is probably a first start because he is going to be your blitzing piece most likely. So it's definitely worth taking the Mighty Blow. It could also make an argument for Guard though it's not overly necessary so early on. You're better off giving him some normal skills such as Tackle. And I'm trying to think of what else I would personally give a white. There are a few things that are relatively useful. Strip Ball for example to get deal with anything that doesn't have short hands if we're making a piece that is designed to hit the enemy. You could also make the argument for wrestle, so we're making sure that the ball is definitely going down, though I don't think it's overly necessary. 
I can see an argument for Dauntless as well, but I think there are better options. Maybe the... Well, at this point I'd probably take Guard, just so we can have him as a utility piece as well. And then we could make an argument for Frenzy, so you get a double shot against the piece and you kind of get a pseudo wolf in the team. Though I can personally see more of a use for Dauntless on the team, though the after after the things that I've given him here, it's basically up to you. So Mighty Blow, Tackle, Strip, or Guard, that's basically what you're going for. And anything beyond is a judgment call and based on what you're up against. If you do roll a double, you're probably taking dodge. Though, I can see an argument for diving tackle too. Though dodge, I think, is the only realistic option. Or you could try a jump up. I suppose you could try a jump up uh, piling on piece as well, if, you, if, if you're going to have a bit of fun with the team. So that's the other option for a double. You can take a jump up, and later on he can be a piling on murder piece. And to be honest, you can, you can make a pretty strong argument for piling on, on the piece as well. So let's give him that. There we go. If you're going to go for a simple hunter killer, though, then the build is slightly different. That that was more a stripping piece to get rid of the ball. If you're going to simply for the murder on the team, still start with mighty blow. I'd say still take tackle. Hope for a double, and that's where you get your jump up, pining on piece, and good luck to anybody who tries to stand against him. I'd also make the I'd also make a very strong argument for Dauntless in this one, so you can hit the Chaos Warriors, etc. as well for free. So Dauntless would probably be my next option. So there's that. You can make the argument for Juggernaut as well, so you can have the chance to frenzy pieces off the pitch, potentially. But um, there's the build for the Whites. Having a look at Ghouls then. God, I hate Ghouls. Well, the first level up... Oh, sorry, I forgot about um, stat ups. With the with the white, all stat ups are useful apart from armor. So movement, strength, and agility, they can all help the white out. If he gets an agility, though, I'd recommend having him as a backup ball carrier as opposed to just a killer or just a stripper. So, I know the word is sacker, but I prefer the word stripper, so deal with it. Ghouls, then, in the Scooby Gang. We've got 7 movement, strength 3, agility 3, armor value 7, so slightly more... Movement for slightly less armor. Yeah, and I don't know. I really hate ghouls. I don't really know why. They kind of, they kind of feel like they're gutter runners, but crap. That's how I basically see them. They have general access and agility access without rolling anything extra. They get passing skill, strength skill on doubles, and of course characteristics on characteristic skills. A ghoul needs block. It's probably a first. It's probably a first take most of the time. One ghoul at least needs short hands, so you can actually handle the ball. One ghoul at least needs sidestep. Well, let's make a let's make a standard ball carry here. So we've got block, sure hands, sidestep. Uh, probably go fend. I'm just having a look to see if there's something more useful at the moment, though. Uh, well, we could go for a potential one turner, adding sprint and sure feet. Though I think I prefer fend at this point. Maybe even catch. But we'll take fend to make sure that we can keep the ghoul off the opponents as much as possible. And then, if he does manage to go beyond there, I'd make him a fast-moving piece, so he gets his sprint, so he can move that extra piece. And he gets sure feet, so he can do this safely. That's my personal ball carrier. And he's now complete. And uh, if we take a utility piece, there's something that is more helpful. Still go block. But now the main point is make him annoying. So still go sidestep, so he can always be in the way. Da, da, da. And could go tackle to make sure that the enemy is automatically dealt with. Uh, we can still go fend, but there's not a lot of point if you're going sidestep as well on this piece. And we can take a diving tackle, so nothing is basically getting away we can use him to support the other ghoul and make sure that anything that tries to get to the other ghoul is being dealt with by diving tackle. And if the ghoul manages to roll any kind of double, any kind of double, then you're probably giving him guard. I've actually railed against guard in the past on the ghoul, but the more I think about it, guard makes a lot of sense, because you can put him into positions where he can be really helpful and he's also in the way. If he gets it at this point especially, it's particularly useful, because he already has blodge, he already has sidestep, he's really difficult to put down. So. Good for Ghoul. Let's give him guard. 
and on this piece the dream is to get plus movement because if you get plus movement then you have a almost almost natural one turner that's a plus movement is kind of the dream setup i think on a ghoul or of course plus agility so if you get movement or agility those two go without saying strength up to be honest is a judgment call um i mean they're not really designed for fighting, but it is a it is a good defensive skill because it's very difficult to put down a strength for ghoul. So I would say always take it, but um, it takes up a slot that you kind of need. So I'm I'm a little bit eh, about strength, but uh, a lot of people would say automatically take strength for sure. Though agility and movement, I say take it without without even thinking. Those two definitely get added to your roster of skills on Mr. Ghoul. Tomb Spitter, no oh, Splitter, I can't, I can't read. And Spine Gobbler, nice name. Zombies are a bit harder. Uh, I mean, zombies are not supposed to do anything other than stand in the way. So in that regard, first you get Block or Wrestle. Uh, a combination of Block and Wrestle is probably a good idea. You can make an argument for taking Tackle, so they can deal with pretty much anything that's standing on them as well. Uh, one of them should have kick for certain, and probably one of them should have dirty player because you can foul quite a lot with the undead, because you can get a pretty decent bench pretty damn cheaply. So I'd go tackle on most pieces as a second skill with a zombie. Uh, I forgot to look at the stats. Sorry, movement four, strength three, agility two, armor value. So they have slightly below average agility, slightly below average movement, but they're pretty standard as a big as a line guy otherwise. And they do start with regeneration, so if they do get injured, they can come back on a 4+. plus. Any double, any double, um, first thing you're going to take is guard. I'd say that with most linos, to be honest. If you manage to get a second double, then you're looking at mighty blow, you're looking at piling on, or you're looking at dodge, depending on what you want to use the piece for. Yeah, I think that's the only thing that we're realistically looking at. Uh, I personally like a Dauntless Zombie as well, just so they can kind of deal with what's in front of them, but it's basically based on the way that I play. And you can make an argument for Pro as well, because they can't do much on their own, though a lot of people don't like Pro, I know. I like Pro, so screw you. And that's basically it. Block Tackle, Block Kick, Block Dirty Player. Or Block Kick Tackle, Block Dirty Player Tackle, you get the idea. There's not really much else that the zombie needs. And then the skeleton. Skeleton is a better mover than the zombie, though he's an average mover. He has the same strength, he has the same agility, but he has one less armor value. He makes up for it on fixed skill though, so if he does roll an 8, he's going to be KO'd, not knocked off the bitch. Uh, stunned, not KO'd, I mean, sorry. And he has regeneration, so he can come back if he's injured. The ghoul does not have regeneration, I forgot to mention that as well. They have general access on a normal. And they have everything else on a double or on a stat up. Uh, stat ups for zombies. Uh, plus strength, definitely. Plus agility, I'd skip it. And plus movement. Depends on what the piece is for and at what stage he gets it. With the skeleton, then. So, most people would automatically go to Dirty Player. But um, I prefer to actually use the skeleton. So I would probably go the block route instead, but Dirty Player is a legitimate option, block is a legitimate option, and Skeleton works very similar to the zombie, but you don't really want to be basing a Skeleton. He's there for support and to deal with things that are on the floor. So at some point he's probably getting Dirty Player, honestly. As sad as it is for me to admit, because I don't like fouling as Skeletons. If he does manage to roll a double, then I would make him a blodge piece, though, and I'd actually maybe build him to be a secondary ball carrier. Yes, he has agility too, but eh, he can kind of just be in the way more than anything. Characteristics, I would take them all. Apart from armor value, there's no point, but strength, agility, movement, I'd take them all on a skeleton, personally. So, that's about it. That's about it. The way the skeletons basically work is that mummies hold the front line by pushing the enemy back or by holding the line together as much as possible. The whites do all the blitzing. One of them is usually a killer, one of them is usually a ball hunter, so that's the way I built them here as well. The ghouls in defense are waiting to be able to jump on a loose ball and on attack they are looking to move the ball forward, of course, and keep the ball safe. The zombies hold the line, they basically just stand in the way, as much in the way as they can possibly be. 
I personally quite like fendons on these as well because it makes them even more frustrating than without. I didn't mention that when I was talking about leveling them, but a uh, block tackle fend is a legitimate option too. And the skeletons are basically there to make up the bench and they do all the stomping. That's basically their main job. Now, I said at the start that I don't play undead in a normal way at all, and it's true, as you can see from this build. One mummy, one white, all the zombies, all the skeletons. This is the kind of undead team I play. And you can see all the stat-ups as I go. And because I don't have a ghoul, I have a skeleton as a ball handler. And I've taken Dauntless on one of the guys because he's always a big guy puncher, and I've taken Block to be safe on the other two. I do have the white who is becoming a kind of kill piece and ball handler at the same time, though now of course my ball handler is this piece, and the mummy is the extra in the team that is there to stand ground and hit things when he can, though he doesn't blitz, the blitzer is the white. And I think that's the new undead team I've got, so we'll leave it at that. The main undead at all TV values, to be honest, are a pretty are pretty good against any opponent. They don't really have any major weakness. They they struggle a little bit with agility teams if the agility coach can get around your zombies. If you set up your zombies so they can't get around, you can cause any coach all kinds of problems. And if you're not taking too many armor value hits as well, that's why zombies are better than skeletons. They're more likely to stay on the pitch and stay standing. But um, I don't think there's any major weakness to the undead team apart from Zara the Slayer, but that's a very rare weakness. They don't really have an answer to throw teammate. That's the one thing that is kind of strangely good against them, but otherwise there's not really a team that can outperform them. The necromantic team is similar, and if it's necromantic against undead, it's a bit of a tight, tight affair, but um, I don't think there's a team that can really hold their own against undead easily. Uh, lizards are always a problem as well, but Lizards and Undead, they're both teams that are always a problem to play against, so that's the thing. Oh, I have another Undead team. No, I have three lots of Stumblers. There we go. <laughs> All Stumblers. All the time. And the new team I just created. So, that's about it. I kind of feel like I do other things when I'm doing these rundowns, but it's been a little while, and uh, I haven't been playing Blood Bowl for a little bit, so I'm going to stick to just builds and very very basic tactics that'll be all for this one so thank you very much for watching and i'll leave you there for now thank you guys see you in the next one bye bye for now